Hello mate. So yeah, I thought uh, we would just make you a quick video update. You can see obviously the, the front bumper's fitted, all the fiberglass uh, bumper's fitted. Um, you can see obviously the inner plastic mounts of the M3 which slide in the M3 brackets on the side actually fitted to the, the bumper. So this bumper actually fits like the total original one does. Um, we basically make ours to be an exact copy of the original so that, that fits perfectly and uh, you can see it actually fits perfectly on all its original mounts so i'm just going to pause the video and pull the bumper off all right uh just uh, and down there i'll pause the video and pull the bumper off so bumper's off now uh you can, you can see in the engine bay it's looking a lot more complete than it did before obviously we've spent all week building building it up the mechanic Sean's been in here busy plumbing everything up, cleaning everything before he puts everything on. You can see he's cleaned all the alternator, the power steering pump, um, all the used parts that we're keeping are being cleaned so it looks in keeping with all the rest of the aluminium. Uh, also he's been mounting all the, the lower parts of the front panel. So you can see there's some stainless steel mounts been made in the front panel itself. They're all bolt in nothing's been welded so all the, the little oil cooler for the power steering is now bolted into the, the front panel he's now in the process of mounting the engine oil cooler so this is engine oil cooler that's power steering oil cooler the coolant fan um, is on that side of the radiator to meet the hot water as it comes into the rad the cold water works its way through the radiator and exits the rad on that side so I always mount the fan over to the hot side of the radiator um, and expect the airflow of the uh, the uh, front panel to keep this side uh, even cooler so he's done a very nice job of that on the front there um, that will be finished probably Monday afternoon the oil cooler mounts will be finished but the fan and the radiator and the power steering uh, rad um, is uh, fully mounted He's also been working on the air dam to keep the, the air filter nice and cool. So that uh, keeps all the hot air away from the air filter. So we're sucking cold air. So that's been modified. This has bought, uh, Ben supplied that to fit onto a uh, E46 M3 S54. And uh, my man's been modifying it all to fit into an E30 chassis with a, an E30 expansion tank. Um, so he's going to mount it on the side where the uh, original um, cruise control would be. The, the engine is nearly built up on this side. There's a, a couple more bits to, to fit. The electrician obviously will, will uh, do all the wiring. That's nothing to do with us. But we're going to work our way around this, this way around the, the engine. The uh, engine itself, like I said earlier, has been fully plumbed up underneath the plenum chamber. You can see the Peterson valve. So if I come back here, we mount the Peterson valve, which is this little valve here. That's a auxiliary oil pressure uh, regulator. So what we do is the Peterson valve, a company called JC Racing, uh, rebuilds our oil pumps, even if they're new or old on, the, uh, on these M3 engines. We send them the oil pump and the sump. They modify the sump, uh, send us two braided lines, which are these two braided lines. They send us this Peter valve, Peterson valve, and they modify the uh, oil pump itself, remove the uh, piston type uh, oil pressure regulator, which is inside the uh, BMW oil pump, and completely jam it to full pressure. So the oil pump on this engine now is uh, working at full pressure all the time. Then we can then come inside the engine bay and twist by screwing this in and screwing this out we can adjust the oil pressure screwing it in raises the pressure screwing it out lowers the pressure so on track um, track driving or, or hard race driving if the oil pressure starts to go down as the engine heats up the oil gets thin the bearing gaps sort of open up um, and the oil pressure is going around 20, 25, 20, 20 psi. You can come into the engine bay and uh, and crank your pressure up on idle. So uh, once you've adjusted it up, uh, you can go back out racing and know that none of your engine is going to suffer oil starvation um, whatsoever. So 
the Peterson valve fits into the oil filter housing. Uh, so there's a, a pipe that goes into the bottom of the oil filter housing in the first chamber. So the oil pump pumps the oil up from the sump into the first chamber of the oil filter housing. Then it's veined off into the oil filter. So at that area where it pumps it up into the first chamber of the oil filter housing, there's an aluminium bung in the S engines, the S54 and the S50. Um, we remove that aluminium bung, fit the braided line, which is this line, from the oil filter housing first area up to the Peterson valve. Once we get to the Peterson valve, there is literally a U shape in this valve. So this Peterson valve, um, there is no actual area which can get jammed. There's no piston that can get jammed in low or high pressure like the original pumps. This piece and valve is just a U shape and all you're doing is pushing a rubber diaphragm in on that U shape or pulling it out. So that is, if, if anything comes up here, any swarf or any blockage, you can literally unscrew this cap end here, clean this area out and then screw it back in and your pump is working properly again. Um, I mean, I've had these oil pumps seize up at high pressure and low pressure. So if it seizes up on low pressure, you end up with no oil pressure whatsoever. It dumps all its oil pressure and it will spin the bearings and destroy the engine. This is why we fit peas and valves to every single build that we do um, so that the oil pressure is fully adjustable. So the engine itself is, uh, is now fully plumbed up underneath this inlet manifold. And uh, there are a couple of things that we need to buy. Obviously, we've been going through a list of stuff we need to buy as we go because we, we were supplied just an engine which was a cylinder head and block. Um, so there's been a lot of parts missing, but we've now got to the point where uh, we know there's a, a wiring loom missing for the lambda sensors, which we've got to order yet, uh, but everything else is on its way. So this car is very, very close at the point of going off to the electricians. All right, so just thought I'd make a little update video. Um, obviously, the car is still in this condition, but there's only really two weeks' work to put the car fully back together. The main work is plumbing the engine up, the fuel system, the water system, the air system. That's where the main work goes. Once we're at that point next week, um, it is going to be probably Wednesday next week that we're ready to go off to the electricians. But once we're at that point, ready to go off to the electricians, the car will go off to the electricians. He'll wire this engine to the car and she'll be ready to rip. Once it's running, it can come back and we can do the final fit up with the body panels and glass. All right, so uh, just a little video. Obviously, this is the, the time where all these little things take, it just, just swallow time. I mean, the mechanics have been on it all week this week and, uh, and we'll be on it another half week next week. All right, cheers, mate. Thank you. Bye-bye.